Hey guys, I got a little film test for you today. Today I'm shooting with Kodak Gold 200 and I wanna see exactly how much of a difference there is if you're shooting at box speed or if you're gonna overexpose and shoot it at ISO 100 rather than 200. So I'm gonna be shooting from up here, right behind me in this little gazebo and this is the scene that I'm gonna be shooting. So I got my Canon EOS 3 today and uh, we're just gonna get right into it. I'll shoot just a few photos just uh, that scene and then we'll try a couple other ones just to kind of get a read of some uh, different type of situations we might be in and see if, you know, shooting at an ISO 100 is really that much different than 200. I mean, I know there's things on the internet and all that out there, but I couldn't find a video that just was super cut and dry because everybody says this film's super versatile and has lots of dynamic range and all that, right? So uh, I want to see for myself just how good it really is. All right, we're going to do this. All right, so I'm shooting with the Canon 16 to 35 f2.8. This is the Mark II version of the lens. Uh, I'm shooting it at f11. I got it on a two second timer. I'm gonna shoot it at box speed first and then I'll change it to ISO 100 and shoot it again uh, really fast after. It's a really dull day as you can probably see out here. So I'm not expecting uh, some wicked photos, but it'll at least give us a read on the results that, uh, that we're after or that I'm after anyways. All right. <laughs> So 200, we're gonna change to one. All right, here we go, 100. All right, I can see the difference. Can you guys see it? All right, so I'm gonna do a little self-portrait action here. I got the EOS 3 set up and I put it in full manual. I'm at f2.8 and the shutter speed's at 30. So I'm at box speed right now. I'm going to shoot that photo. I've pre-focused to my little line spot here. Now I hope that's going to do it because I'm at 2.8 and I'm pretty close to the camera which is going to give a, some shallow depth of field. But we're going to see. I got the 10 second timer so uh, let's just get right down to business here. I think I moved a little bit. Ah! Oh, but check out, Here, here's my prop. Pretty cool, hey? All right, one sec. All right, there we go. 100. Get to my line. It was about here, I hope. Here we go, ISO 100. I can't see any difference. What do you guys think? Because what I did was the camera that I'm shooting with now, I set that up and then I pre-focused on that and there's like a little line in the cement and then I just put it to manual focus and obviously I moved the camera. So I hope I'm in focus. But here, check this camera out though. It's pretty wicked. I, I, I'm gonna shoot some, I'm gonna make a video with this one day. Anyways, uh, let's go shoot another photo. All right, so we got a pretty nice little scene behind me. I chose this location because of the lights on this restaurant here. So I'm just gonna shoot a couple photos here and uh, see how it goes. You know what guys, I changed my mind about this spot. I wanna get a little closer to those lights. So we just gotta move on. I'm gonna need to take this with me too. <laughs> All right, I like this spot way better because I'm closer to the water and I'm getting some reflections of the lights off of the water. So I think it's gonna be a much better shot. Now I'm shooting at uh, F20 because I wanna do a long exposure. Now at ISO 200, I'm getting about five seconds. And then when I switch it over to ISO 100, it'll probably be about 10 seconds. So let's do this. All right, now I'm switching it to 100. All 
All right, there we go. That's it. Hey guys, I just want to talk a little bit about the results we got there. Now, I just want to preface this by saying I know all about overexposing for a dense negative and all that, like if you want to edit for the shadows later on. Now that's not exactly what this test was about. I just wanted to see for myself exactly what the difference would be going from ISO 200 to ISO 100 with Kodak Gold 200 film. Now in that first photo, when I overexposed, you could see a difference. It wasn't a huge difference, but it was definitely there. And out of those two photos, I definitely preferred the box speed version. Now, the one where I was holding the camera, those two look almost exactly the same. You, There's a difference, it's very small though, and you have to look at those photos back to back to see any difference at all. But for me, I'm just gonna say those are the same. I don't got a good explanation of why it went down like that, but that's what happened. Um, now, the last photo, the one where I did the long exposures with the water and the lights on the building, now, there was a big difference there. And of course there was. The first photo was a five second exposure, the second one was a 10 second exposure. So I guess if you're overexposing at a, in a long exposure situation, there's gonna be a big difference. And out of those two photos, I still preferred the box speed version. Um, and here's one problem that I really had with that, those photos. The overexposed one, that dark building, in the overexposed photo, it didn't look anything like the right color. So you better have a pretty good memory to be able to edit the photo back to, you know, true to life color or maybe you know take a reference photo or something. I know I'm not gonna do that. And another problem that I have with overexposing, especially with Kodak Gold 200, is 200 isn't exactly fast film. So going down to 100, you're losing all that speed and I'm just not seeing the benefit. So, you know, I well, you know, on another day maybe, like it's super sunny and there's harsh shadows everywhere and you need to make sure that you, you bring up those shadows and, and then and you're gonna fix it all in the post, then yeah, sure, I get it. But for, for most scenario, like this kind of scenario at least, definitely not gonna overexpose. Um, Code of Gold 200, I'm just shooting at 200 from here on out. Um, if anything changes in that, I'll give you a little update, but uh, that's how I'm rolling with it. Uh, now, hope you guys are able to pull something from this. Uh, it was helpful to me. Anyways, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to catch you guys in the next one. All right, see ya.